Tonight, we're going to be talking about the best coasters at WDW. Do you have thoughts? We want to hear them. We're going to talk all about the parks news that's been going on in the past week, and we're going to finish up deciding how would we spend Josh tomorrow's money tonight on Park Center. Welcome to Park Center for May 28, 2023. I'm your host, Rob Whiteside. As always, thank you guys so, so much for joining us on your Sunday night, especially on a holiday weekend. So thank you guys for that. Uh, if you've not already, please subscribe to WDWNT TV. And of course, give this video a big thumbs up as it helps people to find it. And tonight we have put together Chef's Kiss panel for you guys tonight, starting with my friend Shannon. How are you? I am great, Rob. How are you doing? Hunky Dory, thanks for asking. Uh, and Desi? Bright suns. Mm, too soon. And uh, and Allie, how are you, Allie? Great, how are you? <laughs> Very good, thank you guys. So we're gonna talk about Star Cruiser later. Um, Desi has some interesting news to share with everybody, but we're gonna open up first with a discussion about roller coasters because Disney World roller coasters, not Disneyland, Allie, just kind of put a pause on that. We may revisit that at some point and not the ones at Universal. We're just talking about the ones at Disney World. And here's one of the things that hits me all the time, and maybe you guys hear this too, is people who are coaster fans will go, there's really nothing for me at Disney World. And we're just like, are you freaking kidding me? Like, Disney World's the best. We are, you know, stands of Disney World will do, like go all the time. Doesn't matter if we ride a ride or not. There's a lot to do there. But some people are like Knott's Berry Farm, Coasters, uh, Bush Gardens, those kind of places. And so for those people, I think we should talk about, uh, you know, the, the nine coasters that they have now. Park Center, uh, old Park Center, we actually did a roller coaster versus way back in the day when there were eight. And then... Primeval World went bye-bye. If you guys didn't get that message, I hope you haven't been looking for it because it's been gone. Uh, but this will be the first time there's ever been nine because Rock and Roller Coaster just reopened. It just had a soft reopen. Uh, and, you know, that we, we've got things, that, you know, that we could probably say about Rock and Roller Coaster anyway because uh, people were spreading rumors, and I say people, we were too, uh, that when this thing reopened, that it was not going to reopen as uh, Aerosmith as the theme. It did reopen this weekend. And so now that it's open, it's the first time it's been open with Tron. Now there are nine roller coasters uh, at Disney World. So uh, what I thought we would do with this panel is go around and kind of rank the roller coaster, starting at nine, working your way back to one. Let's start with you, Shannon. I feel like our number nine is going to be the same for all of us. And when I, before I do that, let me set the criteria and say that the, the roller coasters, uh, it'll be, it'll be to me the roller coaster that like I want to ride the most versus I want to ride the least. So I'm not specifically talking about the theming of it or the speed or, you know, uh, how long you have to wait for it. But um, let me ask you, what is your number nine of the coasters? had to go with the barnstormer and yeah. i hope everyone else did too but for me the barnstormer it's so i mean you blink and the ride is over it's also way off the beaten path so i don't want to walk to it i don't want to wait for it it's just never top of mind i just do it if i have tired feet on a halloween party night yep no, and that's fair. Uh, and, and I think that that's probably going to be everybody's. I think somebody said, uh, for the young people who ride coasters, Disney coasters are not intense enough. I would agree with that. In general, most of them are not super intense, but there are a couple, um, you know, special occasions. Uh, what I also would like to do, and I guess I forgot to mention this, is that for those of you who are watching live, and again, thank you for watching. Don't forget to uh, hit the thumbs up so that people can find the video. But we would also like to give you an opportunity in the chat to tell us what you think. Now, you only get one chance to vote. So what we want you to do is tell us what your favorite roller coaster is. What do you think the best roller coaster is at Walt Disney World. So go ahead and start voting in the chat, uh, pound one through pound nine or hashtag one through hashtag nine uh, for which one you think is going to be the, uh, which one to you is the most important. And we're going to weigh that in at the very end of our, our panel here. And uh, you guys will get a vote into, uh, into the rankings. So uh, Desi, um, I feel like you're going to say the same thing that, uh, that Shannon did. Am I wrong? <laughs> Um, I live in Tampa where we have Bush Gardens and I drive right on by it because I don't care as much about roller coasters as I do about theming 
So I would rather go on pretty much any Walt Disney World roller coaster than a Busch Gardens roller coaster, except for one. And that one would be the Barnstormer. I would go on any Busch Gardens coaster before I go on the Barnstormer. It has no theming. It's not thrilling. The only thing that is redeeming about it is that it has the shortest uh, ride requirement. So I think my kids were one and could get on it. So that's its only redeeming quality is that little kids can enjoy it. Okay. Uh, Allie? Uh, yep. Also going to go with the Barnstormer. Everything has already been said. It's you know, not a lot of theming. It's super short. It's great if you have little kids, but for me, I I'm not going on that. I'm sorry. I don't care if I can walk right on it. <laughs> You're not going on it at all. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Ouch. Well, and you know what? The funny thing is, and and I, like I said, we're not going to talk about the ones at Disneyland, but it is pretty much the same situation as what we have with the formerly Gadget Go coaster, now Chippendales Gadget coaster. It's basically the same thing a kitty coaster as we call it uh and you know the theming there's just not a ton of it it's kind of cute the theming that's there uh it used to be like you know the barnstormer and it was themed around like it actually being a barn with chickens etc and then it became the great goofini um which i don't think was enough of an upgrade i feel like you should have done something a little bit more to that so i agree with you i think it should be in that last place and it's not necessarily because it's just a kitty coaster i think you can do a good job with those so um, I think we put that at number nine. Let's go uh, backwards. We'll do this uh, like snake style um, in, a, in a draft. So Allie, what's number eight? <sighs> number eight for me is Space Mountain. Whoa. I do not enjoy it. I'm sorry. I just, your Space Mountain is terrible. I'm sorry. I appreciate that it's the original. But it is the queue is fantastic, and and Tom will disagree with me on this, but it's terrible. Like there are so many better versions. It needs to be redone in Florida. It's janky. You're whipped around. <laughs> I went on it in August. I think it was about five seconds after we left the load platform. I immediately regretted my decision. That ride janky. Needs to be <laughs> it's and janky. Redone. It is terrible. It is janky. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's bad. All right. Well, Desi, she called it your Space Mountain. Uh, so, you know, I mean, uh, what, what's your number eight? Uh, my number eight, I actually haven't even been on, uh, and that would be Slinky Dog Dash. And Whoa, what? when it came out, Whoa. <laughs> yeah, I haven't been on it because the line has been too long and it's in the sun with no shade. I just haven't wanted to go on it. I think I was pregnant when it opened or maybe like i got pregnant quickly after it opened but it just it was not like something that i could go on when i was pregnant and then my kids were too small and now i think one of them might be tall enough but i still haven't gone on it because it's just it doesn't look that appealing to me it's a 40 minute wait right now desi if you want to head on up the road and try to ride it no. uh that's no. actually really good is 40 minutes so uh yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I agree with you. The line's usually pretty long, which it can be a deterrent, but I'm shocked that at this point you haven't at least found a way to ride it. There is, yeah, I mean, I, I would go ride anything uh, at least once. So uh, what about you, Shannon? I, I am with Desi on this. I went for Slinky Dog Dash because it's a What, pretty in the Sam Hill? <laughs> roller coaster. I mean, yes, it does have the part where it stops and does the launch, but hang on, it's not a great coaster and there's no theming it's terrible you sit you stand in that line and you're looking at i don't know what it's not good okay well you know what that's fine because i'm about to get some hate and let me just again because of how much hate i got pixar on um i want to say from the beginning that this is this is my list of the ones that i want to go on the most to the least and for me everest is number eight and and i know Look, whoa, whoa, let's let's have it. Bring it on. But for me, Everest, it's like the Yeti doesn't work anymore. Um, you know, the the backward thing is whatever. I don't know. I just I, I don't enjoy that one as much. And so Everest is number eight for me. I wow. mean, there's only nine. So That's something's got to be number eight. But I, but I mean, think about the popularity of Slinky Dog Dash. It, the time for that one is almost always double what Everest is. So people are loving because it. Maybe it's because kids. It's got a shorter uh, height requirement. More kids can get on. Yeah, it. Yeah, more That's kids. Why it's... Yeah. yeah. 
Uh, and don't get me wrong, I don't hate it. I don't hate Everest. It's just like if I'm making my priorities about which one I'm going to do, that one's probably for me number eight. So, uh, and then number seven for me is uh, rock and roller coaster. And again, uh, you know, there are a lot of a lot of roller coasters there. But for me, rock and roller coaster, I like the theming of it. I like the fact that you know you get to, like the pre-show, love the pre-show, and then you go back and out out in the alley. And the first time you do that, that's amazing. And then once you get on, uh, you know, that takeoff is great. But then it's over pretty quickly. I mean, it's a very short roller coaster, and then you don't really get to see much while you're in it, which, again, is kind of like how is that different from, you know, Coney Island if you're not really getting to take in something that's, as, you know, that's well-themed. So, I, again, neither of these are going to be popular opinions, but like I said, there are, there are, there are nine. So uh, something has to be eight, something has to be seven. Back to you, Shannon. What do you got for seven? <laughs> I have... Thunder Mountain. And I know you said not to let Disneyland come into play here, but I wrote <laughs> Disneyland Thunder Mountain for the first time last week, and it was incredible. I thought it blew Walt Disney World's Thunder Mountain away. Um, I don't know. It just it never – it's fun for various reasons. I just don't really care for it. I don't like the lap bar situation. It's one where I'm with my husband, he's bigger. So I feel like I'm flying all around and he's not. And, uh, and the, the effects are lacking. The queue is hot. You're in that tight line. There's no air flowing through. I can do without it. Hello, Tony Baxter. We have news for you. <laughs> Shannon is very disappointed. Uh, Desi, number seven, what you got? I mean, I think Shannon and I are on the same wavelength here because Ooh. I also have Thunder Mountain down and not because I went to Disneyland last week, but because I went to Disneyland Paris last week Ooh. and oh. got to ride that version of Thunder Mountain, which blew ours away. It was so amazing. Um, yeah. And for the same reasons, it's hot. The queue is so hot and it's um, it's just it's fun. Um, if I'm in the Magic Kingdom, it's probably going to be one of the first things I want to do. But it's just, for me, as a roller coaster, not as good as some of the others. We all said bar Barnstorm, and then it went off the rails real quick. <laughs> uh, but, I, you know, that is hard to take into it because I feel like our... I, I, when I keep saying our, I think most of us are East Coast and have gone to Disney World. And uh, the one in Disney World is... I you know probably the inferior doesn't to me make it less you know in in the grand scheme of things but when you do go and see how much cooler it could be somewhere uh that that's got to weigh in a little bit on your uh, on your picks so uh if you if you're looking at the uh the polling on the side and again if you guys want to weigh in uh weigh in throughout this this segment uh it looks like cosmic rewind is is number one and big thunder is number two so and then you know here uh desi and shannon dropped it at number seven so <laughs> <laughs> uh, Allie, yeah, seven. Allie, what is your number seven, and why is it Big Thunder? <laughs> uh, actually, I'm with you on this one. My number seven is Rock and Roller Coaster. Um, hey -oh. It's, again, a, a little outdated. It, I just think it needs some upgrades. Like you said, everything goes by really fast. Uh, the ride is super short. The queue is fun. Um, but, like, when we go there, I'm usually sitting outside drinking while my other half goes on the ride, single rider, and I'm perfectly content not even going on it anymore. It's okay. It's just I feel like it's seen better days. Make it a stretch. Make it a super Make stretch. Make it a super stretch. Yep. Um, fun fact, because, you know, Dizzy always likes to kind of, like, name drop of people who are at her wedding or nearby her wedding and all that kind of stuff. I did see Jody Benson get brought in the back door of uh of rock and roller coaster once when i was there so wow. uh that uh, i had a star sign i thought you were there, gonna say I... jody benson went to your wedding <laughs> no 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 and not not that i saw she could have snuck in the back it was probably a big deal <laughs> um so ali what have you got for number six uh number six i have seven dwarves mine train um it's a cute ride the Theming is fun, but again, the wait time for that ride does not equal the amount of fun that I have on that ride. So if it's a walk-on, I will go. Um, it is, I think, way more fun at night. Like, I rode it once when the fireworks are going off, and that was kind of a magical little moment. But 
for me, it's just, it's super short. The queue takes forever. It's hot. And like you get on it, you're like, yay. And then it's over. So it's okay. You get on it and you're like, what? Yeah. <laughs> yay. yay. <laughs> Uh, interesting. Okay. Mind train you have at number six. And just again, so we can see, uh, remind the kids at home, uh, this is what we're looking at so far. Uh, Barnstormer, everybody was like, that's number nine for me for sure. Then it went off the rails here uh, with Slinky Dog Dash being most people's number eight and then Big Thunder uh, because Desi and Shannon are same page. Will that continue? <laughs> what is next, Desi? I don't know. We'll see. Uh also, because Disneyland Paris has the better version of it, Space Mountain is next on mine. Um, I was kind of waffling a little bit between whether I was going to put this behind Thunder Mountain. And the only reason I have it um, inching out Thunder Mountain is really because of the air conditioning here in Florida. It's needed. Also, I like the queue in Space Mountain and the music. So that's, that's what puts it just slightly above Thunder Mountain for me. Okay. Uh, and does it does it continue? Are you guys on the same page here? Hi ho! Whoa! <laughs> 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 All yeah. right. Yeah. So this is where I start to take a corner of not so much negative but more positive. I think Mind Train is cute. I think it's the only attraction where the face screen animatronic works. I love that scene. Um, and I like how the cars swing a little. It gives it a little uniqueness. Um, but because it really doesn't appeal to my age group, it has the long lines constantly, um, and it's a pretty short ride, I had to rank it lower. So I still okay. think it's great. Yes, and it is not necessarily, uh, there's not a lot of space for, for us uh, larger Americans. <laughs> yeah, it is a tight squeeze. Perfect. However, the on-ride uh, video is is fantastic yeah. when you get your uh, photo pass that's kind of fun um but i did love your your signal into this uh into it with the mine train so now you're down to number five are you going to sing your way into this one oh no and i don't think you're going to like my number five because oh, Lord. it is tron oh okay uh, bye yeah. have a good night yeah. <laughs> this is this is where you have to start folding in these other factors aside from just the ride itself the show building, horrible. It's Tron. I don't really care about Tron. It is super short. Um, I give it props for being a new, you know, style roller coaster, right? It, it's not one, it exists other places, not one that's, you know, to Disney World. Um, but yeah, it's just not one that I, I'm dying to go on every time. Okay, sorry. that's fair. I saw your shirt, nope. so sorry. <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. Desi? Rob, did you say what your number six was? Oh, I did uh, Did I? I may or have just put it five? in. And... No. Oh, did I not? Oh, okay, sorry. Go ahead and tell us yours, though. Okay. Uh, my number five <laughs> is Rock and Roller Coaster. Um, so I enjoy the music. Um I like that it's air conditioned. I like the launch, but the kind of cardboard cutouts that you go through during the ride, uh, they they could do better with that. Um, okay. So uh, yeah, so let me go back to to uh, I I guess I didn't actually say it out loud, but Big Thunder was my number six, uh, and Space Mountain my number five, and just. Honestly, exactly the reasons you said, Shannon. Like, I think the better versions are at Disneyland. I mean, I just, I really do. So, um, Space Mountain at Disneyland, Hyper Space Mountain. Oh my gosh, come on, that is so good to me. Like, I don't care. It was good. It's so good when you yeah. when you turn around mm -hmm. that corner and they start that Star Wars music and you start going up the hill. It it's is also it's... Hyper Space at Disneyland Paris. Does it go upside down in Disneyland? No. No. No, oh, Disneyland Paris is Paris. Disneyland Paris is more like a, a rock and roller coaster, um, yeah. with the way that mm -hmm. it's set up with the speakers the in in the back. Yeah. yeah. Uh, when when the one in Paris first launched, I was actually there that year, and it was the first time I'd ever ha heard on ride on board uh, audio with a roller coaster, and they had the music set so that when you pull back into the station, and it might have been different for you because of the Star Wars thing, but as you pulled into the station and you pulled to a stop, you heard da 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 da. 
like it was like the end of a movie that you were writing and i was like <laughs> i was like every uh, every everything else stinks now yeah right and i was like everything else stinks now this is horrible so uh yeah I, I i space mountain i do like space mountain it's in the middle for me because it's one of those that's harder to get on if it's if the ride time is shorter you're like let's do space mountain um if you've got lightning lane that trek through that queue can feel like it's forever but i do like the queue better here because it seems more organized than the one in california which i don't know where they're sending me at any given time so um yeah. And the two track thing is kind of cool. Like when you were a little kid, you're like, which track are we doing? A left or right? And then also the game that they had for play was actually pretty good. So there's a lot of little elements to this one that I think are cool. But uh, I do, I mean, I got Hyperspace Mountain in like just embedded in my brain as like that makes that one a little bit better. And the side by side, I think is kind of cool too, which is what I think made our splash better. But anyway, uh, so Allie, it's over to you now. Uh, my number five, I have Thunder Mountain. Um, it's a great ride. Again, I think the worst version is in Florida, but it's still a fun ride there. The nostalgia factor is great. Um, I'm probably not waiting more than 20 minutes for it, but it's still a super fun ride, cute ride, and I don't know. I'd still go on it, just not waiting a really long time for it. Okay, and your number four? Number four, I have Slinky Dog. I personally like Slinky, kind of the same thing. I'm not going to wait an hour and 20 minutes for it, but if I can hop on it first thing or get a lightning lane or better yet, go on it at night uh, when you're not standing in the sun, it's super fun at night because some of the stuff lights up when you go by, you get to see all of Hollywood Studios. I mean, it, it is a kiddie coaster and no, it's not very long, but I like Slinky. We have a dachshund, so there's a little bit of a soft spot for me for Slinky and it's just fun. It's cute and it's fun. Yeah. Okay. Uh, back to Desi, number four, what you got? Uh, number four, I have Seven Dwarfs the Mine Train. Um, probably, I think that it's super cute. I love the theming. I think it's got good thrills. I do like how the cart goes back and forth. Um, the cons for me, obviously, the line. And I don't like the glow faces. I, I hate yeah. them. Um, also on Frozen. So please bring that technology here so that we can get rid of all of our glowy faces. Glowy faces. All right, Shannon, number four. <laughs> I'm going rocking here. Uh, I personally love this roller coaster and I appreciate the story through the queue, through the pre-show. And then when you go into that alleyway, to me, it feels so authentic. And that's that's part of the experience. That's the buildup of the ride. Eh? And the launch is great. It has inversions, which is hard to come by in Disney World. Um, and it is tired. I'll admit that. So that's why I had to put it a little lower. But who doesn't love Aerosmith? I do. Okay. All right. Well, and and I'm looking at the at the chat uh, voting, and Mine Train's a zero percent. Nobody wanted Mine Train as their number one. Um, that's interesting because Barnstormer has. A vote, so mine train must fall into a, a, an interesting, an interesting place. I'm like, hmm, okay. Uh, my Barn son doesn't Storm love has mine. Got more than Tron. Yeah, <laughs> my son does. Well, and again, we ask we ask people to pick their favorite. So you know, and you can see Cosmic Rewind is way up there. Big Thunder, I think Tradition probably com comes into play a little bit for Big Thunder for people. But again, uh, if you have not already, please cast your vote uh, by using one of those numbers in the chat. And uh, my son doesn't really love mine train because again, the weight doesn't actually give the payoff because it's usually like a you know 60 to 90 minute wait uh you know you can get a shorter wait if you're doing like a hard ticket event but not much and then you know it is a very short roller coaster but i do like the you know the way that the 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 things swing back and forth so um you know i i for number for number four i put slinky dog and and my family doesn't like slinky dog for the exactly the same reasons they don't want to wait in line they don't think it's a great ride uh it's hot in toy story land but i i think you mentioned it maybe uh i, I can't remember if it was ali or shannon talked about the the views like when you were going up and you see yeah. the views and you can see batu uh over there i mean it's it's a rarity to be able to see those kind of things because disney usually hides their coasters right they're, it's, they're, they're indoors they're backstage they're in a big huge ugly blue show building you know they're somewhere that that they're not intrusive, you know, what you kind of love. It makes it different than Knott's Berry, King's Dominion, Carowinds, places like that, where, like, you hear the screaming all over 
the place. And so I think they do a good job with that. This one does feel like you're out in the middle of everything and, you know, people, you can see things. So I, I, for me, I, I think it's a good coaster. I think it was a great addition to add something else. It's a family coaster. I do love that, that second launch with the hang on. I just, I don't know. There's some, there's something stupid about that. I just, I just, but I love that. Uh, and then I put Mine Train at number three because, you know, I know that that's still a very popular attraction. It feels like you're getting gold when you're able to get onto that one if you don't have to wait or pay. Um, so I think that the queue is neat. I think that the, you know, once you get inside, you're not suffocating because there's a short amount of queue in there as opposed to most of its outdoors. Uh, mm -hmm. And then once you get in and ride it, uh, it, you know, you guys were talking about the rocking back and forth is a cool thing. The show scenes are great. Um, it's got a hidden Oswald in it. I kind of love that. Um, you know, so there's all those little things to me that make it very charming. And the fact that they took the Snow White animatronics and worked them into the attraction rather than getting rid of them completely is kind of cool to me. So that's my number three. Uh, back to you, Shannon. Yeah, okay. So my number three is going to be Space Mountain. I, I know it wasn't opening day, but a few years after opening day. So it has that quintessential vintage Disney feel. You have to give it up for Imagineering back in the day with that building. So that architecture is amazing. I love the queue. I love the score. And it's a decent length. It is definitely an adjustment for your, for your back and for your bones. It's not the most pleasant roller coaster to ride. But despite that, I still want to do it every time I'm in Magic Kingdom. Okay. That, that, that's fair. And Desi? <laughs> Ignore that. <laughs> You're muted. Oh, I'm so sorry. My number three <laughs> is Expedition Everest. I really enjoy this roller coaster. I like the backwards part. Um, for me, I really love the theming. I think the queue is amazing. One of my favorite um, Disney documentaries was the making of this ride and seeing all the Imagineers go to Nepal and seeing all the detail and care that was put into making this ride authentic. Um, ha if the disco, if the Yeti wasn't disco Yeti and if it was working, uh, it would probably be one or two, but that's the reason it's number three. Okay, and Allie, what's your number three? Uh, number three for me is going to be Tron. Um, I think it's a wonderful ride. It's an addition that Magic Kingdom desperately needed. Um, but I think it was Shannon that said, like, the show building is a little bit of an eyesore, but <clears throat> the rest of it, like, the queue and everything is really, really cool. Um, but it is something that I do think about when I'm booking my park passes now. So the fact that it's a consideration means that it should be one of the higher rides. It's a bummer that it's so short, but, I mean, still an amazing attraction. Well, I mean, you know, y'all say whatever you want to about it. I'm not a huge fan. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Or anything, but that's fine. You could talk about Tron. I get it. And you know, when Kamila was on here, she's like, "Tron, what are we even doing? Why is why is that a thing?" And nobody Agreed. knows Tron. And I was like, "What? Like, I mean, that Daft Punk music is fantastic. The glowing um, yeah. uh, canopy is kind of awesome. There are a lot of different things that I think are good about it. But I totally get what you're saying. So let's let's take a look at the tote board here. Uh, you can see on the on the left hand side everybody who's voted, and thank you for everyone who's voted. Uh, Cosmic Rewind is still at number one, and None of us have mentioned it yet, so uh, that's a thing. And then uh, it looks like um, um, Big Thunder is number two and Everest is number three. So, uh, and again, somebody must have. I I'm sorry if I made somebody do a pity vote for Mine Train because uh, I see it's on the board now. But uh, yeah, that's that's uh, I it deserves something. So thanks for giving it some love. But here's where we stand so far. Again, everybody was Barnstormer number nine, um, but. Um, but no one has mentioned Cosmic Rewind yet, so it's in everybody's number one or two at least, uh, so that's pretty exciting. But other than that, everything else has been mentioned at least once, so, um, you know, it's, it's, we're, we're cutting it close. So, uh, is it back to you, Allie, for your final, or uh, for number two? Number two, yep. So number two for me is going to be Expedition Everest. Uh, I love the theming. It is an amazing ride, even though every time I go on it and it goes backwards, I end up with like super bad motion sickness, but it's okay. It's worth it. <laughs> I do wish the Yeti worked, but like you can see the passion that was put into that ride and it's just like truly Disney. Like it is just, it's a perfect 
thing to be in that back corner. It's just, it's such a good ride. And it's still yeah. great, like, to this day. Okay. Desi? Um, my number two is Tron. I really, I, I thought that it was a lot of fun. Maybe it's because I, I've only done it once and it was during a pass holder preview, so I didn't have to wait in a long line for it. Um, I, I just had such a good time with it. Um, I think that the ride system is really interesting, how it's not just like your typical roller coaster where you've either got the lap bar or the shoulder harness. It's, um, you know, it really feels like you're riding on the bike. Um, I think it's like the reveal of it when you're in the pre-show room, you think that you're just watching this screen. And then when it reveals, oh, this is actually glass and you can see down below and see the other cars or the other bikes launching. I just think that it's really me. It's really unique. I like the technology that they use in it. So um, I think the only con that I had for it was the length. Okay. Uh, and Shannon, I, I'm going to go ahead and guess. I'm going to go ahead and guess. You are going to say Everest. Yes, and I've been waiting for the last 30 minutes to talk about this because I'm so ashamed of you for putting it so low. That's See, fine. Everest, you, you wouldn't be the first one to be ashamed of me. <laughs> Everest, the experience begins once you come over the bridge, you make the right at Yak and Yeti, and down the path a ways, you, you see a little, like, what I would think is some kind of offering sculpture. It looks like a little temple, but it matches up with the Everest, which is in the background. And so as you're following that path along, you're, you're becoming part of the theme of this attraction. And when I think about what ride I want to go on, Everest is beyond just wanting to go on the ride itself. It's wanting to go through the queue. When I was a kid, I swear to you, that Yeti Museum, I thought it was real. I really <laughs> thought the pictures or anything in it were real. It was believable. Um, but there's so much enjoyment standing in the queue and then the ride itself. It's different. It goes backwards. It has a drop. I did get to witness the Yeti working, um, which was a blessing. Is it a little less great now because it doesn't work? Sure. But I still think it, it deserves to be in the tops. Oh, and by the way, Joe Rody. Well, I mean, you yes. did like trash Tony Baxter earlier, so I guess giving love to, to <laughs> Joe Rody makes sense. Um, yeah, you know what? I, 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 I there. You guys made some Did great points about you? Everest. Okay. No, you guys made some great <laughs> points about Everest. It's just one of those again. Just thinking personally about the ones that mean the most to me to be able to do it. If I only had a finite amount of time to do these roller coasters, um, you know, Everest would probably be last for me. And so, I mean, not last. Storm, Barnstormer is last. <laughs> Everest is number eight. But again, there are nine really good coasters. They all serve a purpose. If Barnstormer wasn't a good coaster uh, and, or served a purpose, it would be Primeval World, which if we had 10 on here and Primeval World was here, it would easily be number 10 for me. Where it's it's so funny because it's very similar to the ride system of Goofy Sky School, and I kind of like Goofy Sky School at Disneyland. Uh, I said kinda, Allie. I said kinda. Anyway, Worst ride. so when you, <laughs> so when you go, but it, but you get what I'm saying though. So I think that you guys made some great points about it. It is, it is part of the skyline, which is really cool. I loved watching them build it. Um, I think that the, like you said, it's very like it fits in in that area, um, and then the whole like T train and all that stuff. It was very exciting to me at the time. Um, but it's one that I could ride maybe twice, and then I'm like, I'm good. Um, so, I mean, I, that's just why that's there for me, but I get why you guys had it at number two. Um, for me, number two is Tron. Surprise, surprise, actually, you know, even though I'm repping the shirt here. And that's because there's one that I think is is a little bit better. Like Tron, I think, is a smooth a coaster. Calm down. I, I think it's a <laughs> – I think Tron is, is such a smooth coaster. And, and since it's the most recent, you would think maybe, okay, that would be my favorite. I do love the IP. I did go and spend a lot of money uh, <laughs> at the gift shop and probably, like I said on another episode, would have spent more had somebody been, not been holding me back. Uh, but I, I, I love that it's there, that it exists, that it didn't replace Space Mountain, that it was, an adi that, like, it was a plus out on the Magic Kingdom. It didn't really take away anything but just a few more – feet of the um of the indy or the the tomorrowland speedway so i you know i love the feel of it I like the the lockers the way they work um the whole the whole vibe of it is great 
But my number one, without a doubt, is Cosmic Rewind. That is the roller coaster that already, even though it hasn't been there that long, I've probably ridden the most because I just love it. And part of it is the rewritability. And Ali, you and I may have talked about this a little bit that like, even though that the Guardian's Tower, uh, the, you know, it, Mission Breakout is, it has the switching of songs. I don't really mind, I don't really care too much about which song I get when I'm on Mission Breakout. I care which song I get when I'm riding Cosmic Rewind. I don't want Conga. Go ahead and at me in the chat. That's fine. But, uh, but the, I mean, it, I feel like each one gives you a different vibe. You get excited about it. You know, when it's about to launch, what's that song going to be? Then you ride through, and it's just got a cool pre-show. It's got this, this like, you know, a lot to see, as opposed to what we talked about with Rock and Roller Coaster and Space Mountain inside. You, you, you're seeing things. You're hearing things. It's a full experience. And then the, the, the cars moving around as you go. Now, that doesn't work for Jason Diffendahl, who got sick on it. But there are, you know, most people... You know, I think the, the first time they get on, they're a little queasy about it. But I, I mean, I, I love that roller coaster. Uh, it's a great addition. I, number one for me easily. And clearly it's number one for all of you. But you got to <laughs> tell me why, because I, it's, it's spoiler. I mean, it's the only one left for everybody. So, Shannon, why is it your number one? Okay. Well, the only negative, the only negative would be the show building. It's horrible, but I forgive it because the length of the ride, which I think clocks in over four minutes. That's incredible. That's bang for my buck. Um, the music changes the ride experience and your ride experience also changes depending where you're sitting on, on the train. The pre-show is an attraction in its own right, and it's nothing that I had ever experienced before. It's, oh, and also a uh, holiday overlay. I, I really loved having a holiday overlay. So to me, I think we all know this, but 10 out of 10, love it. That's the only problem that I had with it was the holiday overlay was not what I wanted. What I wanted was either sure. of them to change the pre-show, which they could do because it's all screens, or, and or, do different songs that are actually rock and roll Christmas songs. Run, run, Rudolph, not, you know, you know, run, run, rocket. But um, just actually doing different songs to me for Christmas would have given that just a huge, uh, a huge uptick for me. But at least they tried. Let's give them that. that yeah. At least they tried for the overlay. So, uh, Desi. I mean, what, what can I say that you guys didn't already say? Um... Also, it's air conditioned, which apparently matters yeah. to me because that's that factored into a lot of my rankings. Um, I I love Guardians as an IP, so um, I love I love the music. And uh, you're wrong, Conga is a great song. Uh, again, everybody gets their own opinion. It's not my <laughs> fault if yours is wrong, <laughs> Allie. <laughs> Uh, yeah, everything's been said. The queue is fantastic. The approach with the ship outside is great. Um, again, you're in the air conditioning, so that certainly helps uh, when the wait times are longer. Uh, the pre-show, while it is a little bit corny, like I don't really mind standing through all of that. It loads pretty quickly. Every time you're on it, it's a different experience. Even like you said, the same song in a different seat is, is a different ride. So the rewritability is fantastic and the ip is great like the guardians are fantastic they're fun characters it's funny it's still funny even on your 20th ride it's just it was a really well done roller coaster okay uh i'll go with that oh my gosh so i'm i'm looking at the at the uh the votes and trying to tabulate what all of the uh the votes were from our um from our audience here tonight and again thanks to everybody who did uh did vote we'll have another opportunity for you to vote uh, on our on our final topic at the end, but Tron Light Cycle Run is number nine. What? Like that? Shocking. That surprises me a little bit. Uh, and then uh, this this is again going through going through the chat. Uh, Slinky Dog uh, is number eight. Barnstormer number seven. Is that right? And then tied with Mine Train. Um, wow. Yeah. And then six is Space Mountain. Five rock and roller coaster. No, no. Five is six is rock and roller coaster. Five is Space Mountain. Uh, four is uh, no. The top three are Everest, Big Thunder, and then Cosmic Rewind, which again is kind of funny to me uh, that it worked out that way. But um, 
But anyway, thank you guys for voting. I appreciate it. We appreciate it. Uh, hopefully that was a fun topic to do. And if you guys liked it, let us know in the comments. And we will uh, we'll entertain the idea of going back to Disneyland. Because Disneyland has a lot of good roller coasters, too. Some of them are similar track. Uh, and some of them are way different, and some of them have been plussed out. But it'll be it would be an interesting conversation, I think, to have that about uh, about Disneyland as well. So, uh, thank you guys for all being in here and talking about that stuff. Let's take a quick commercial break, uh, and when we come back, we will have some uh, we'll have a rundown Park Center style of all the news from the parks, uh, and then we'll have a final discussion about how we're going to spend Josh tomorrow's money for him. So don't go away. We'll be right back. <laughs> to Deep in the Plus. Each week, join host Rob Whiteside as he and a panel of Disney superfans take a different movie or TV show from the Disney Plus catalog. They'll tell you its history, details, and give their review so you'll know if it's worth your time. Current shows, classic movies, and everything in between. Watch Deep in the Plus live Wednesday nights at 9 Eastern for new episodes. Or catch Deep in the Plus anytime on YouTube on WDWNT-TV. This program is brought to you by Wigs, the WDWNT Inner Globe Society. Support WDWNT to get early and exclusive access to content you can't find anywhere else, including exclusive post shows for WDW News Tonight and Park Center, access to our prize wall, a monthly Zoom with Tom, access to our Discord community, early access to our events, and much more starting at just $2 per month. For more information, visit patreon.com slash WDWNT or visit WDWNT.com and click the Patreon link. Join Wigs and unlock even more WDWNT. everybody welcome back to park center thanks again for being with us tonight and just a reminder if you have not already give us a thumbs up as it helps people to find us uh also uh you can find lots of great programming on this channel so please make sure to uh to follow wdwnt tv give us a subscribe uh we've got uh, news tonight's coming back on june 1st we've got tomorrow uh, this wednesday night we're going to have uh spider-man homecoming on deep in the plus a lot of other stuff happening so please uh, subscribe to WDWNT TV and uh, give us a big thumbs up, but we appreciate it. So let's move on uh, to Parks News. And uh, let's start with the Star Cruiser. Last week we had a big show where we talked about the Star Cruiser closing. It was a big announcement that hit us and we were like, wait a minute, is this really happening? Is this possible that this huge uh, hotel that they put in place is, you know, they were like, eh, let's close it. Uh, and, you know, we kind of speculated as to why they closed it so quickly, what things they might be putting into place. And so some of that stuff came to light in the fact that apparently they're getting a $300 million tax write-off for closing uh, before the in, uh, uh, by the end of Q3. So they're, that's why this uh, the last voyage is September 28th to September 30th, is that starting on October 1, this is closed, and then they can uh, get a $300 million tax write-off on this. So um, I, I don't... I don't even know what to say about that other than the fact that it's it's crazy to me, Desi, that it's cheaper to close this thing than it is to keep it open. Um, I find it hard to believe that they're closing it completely. I think that there's going to be something coming down the road. But after last week's discussion, um, I had mentioned that I already had two aunts who were interested in it, but we couldn't find a fourth, so that's probably why we weren't going to go. But lucky enough, Kamila, who is on the show, is now our fourth. So we are going, and she booked it for us because she's a travel agent. She was able to get in. Um, so glad that we were able to get in before it sold out. I am super excited about this. I realize that I am paying as much to go on this for two nights as my Paris trip uh, for a week and a half, but worth it. 
Yeah, I mean, some people were were like saying, oh, well, the reason that it's doing so poorly is all the one percenters have gone and that yeah. all the Star Wars freaks have gone. And so now there's there's no reason to go back um, yet when they put all everything on sale on uh, on Friday. So they went through and they rebooked everybody past who was past September 30th when they then they opened it up for bookings after that the calendar that was on went like crazy so first thing that we reported from the blog was that uh and i'll pull up these articles is final voyages for the galactic star cruiser briefly open for bookings and then closed so uh according and i, I talked to kamila as well according to her that they were saying uh we're we're pausing for magical enhancements that to me is code for we are flooded it's broken we can't handle this influx um and and keep in mind this was at full price uh that everybody was like wait a minute i don't know that seems a little expensive and then it was like oh my god it's closing take my money <laughs> uh, i also because they... i didn't want i didn't want to miss out and regret it in the future yeah um you know they say that people later in life tend to regret the things they didn't do more than the things that they did do so I would probably I weighed it and I figured I would regret not going more than I would regret spending the money and I'm also only paying for a quarter of the room so if I was paying for my whole family to go that probably would not be worth it yeah I don't blame you at all but are you trying to convince us or you <laughs> <laughs> maybe my husband who's watching this is why okay. I, I have to go <laughs> there you go. No, I I get it. Uh, then we reported that the last two months of the Star Cruiser were sold out. So you can see all the black uh, areas were the ones that were sold out. And then like July had a little bit left. And then we posted this, that the Galactic Star Cruiser was completely sold out. And the headline that we gave on News Today, as well as the one below, sold out forever. Like that yeah. is, to me, as a Star Wars slash Disney fan, chilling words to say it's sold out forever. And I and Shannon, I know that you were probably notoriously the bougiest person that we ever have on panel here. <laughs> this this one to you didn't even didn't even interest you at all to go on, did it? No, no. You can go back to that episode of Park Center uh, right before it opened, where I said this is going to be a huge failure. And and again, I say this as a business failure, not as a failure on the Imagineers or the cast who worked there, um, but. It's, it was egregious. I think that's the best way to put it. And as someone who enjoys Star Wars, um, who doesn't mind spending money on things, like it never even had the slightest appeal to me. So um, it's no surprise that it ended up selling out. I think about all the people years from now who are going to be like, there was this crazy concept of this cruise, but you were in a building and I got to experience it. There's not going to be many people who can say they got to do it. Yeah, no, that's absolutely true. And uh, somebody was asking about how quickly it sold out. So it went on sale at 7 a.m. Eastern time, and then it actually sold out before 4.30 uh, on uh, on the same day, 4.30 p.m., keeping in mind that there were times that it was down, that no one could do anything. Mm -hmm. And then also that some of the bookings were like today. Like Friday, you would have had to have decided that you wanted to go tomorrow. Like that's, that's an insane, and it's non-refundable. So if you panicked, and you were like, what's left? And they said, Monday. And you go, okay, I'll do it. Like, you know, that's that's a huge commitment to make. Um, so, yeah, I'm um, I'm glad, Desi, that you got on board. I'm glad Kamila's going with you because I know she worked hard to make that happen. Uh, but I do want to say, sorry if that was too loud. We do have, we do. Have, I'm sorry, did I scare you, Shannon? I, I you know, yeah, some people. <laughs> Okay, I, I apologize. Uh, we do have a super chat. I wanted to make sure our super chat queen was uh, was uh, rewarded appropriately enough. Knowing how big a fan of Star Wars Desi is, so happy for her Aww. that she is going. Awesome, Desi, get uh, me something, anything, LOL, and hi, Rob and ladies. So uh, oh, thank you, Rosita, uh, so much for the super chat. What? Yes, thank you, Rosita. So I try to get into the shop Disney and buy my Star Cruiser stuff immediately. And it said that I couldn't buy it until it's 30 days from my voyage, which made me really sad because I wanted to buy the shirt immediately. I wanted to get all of my cosplay. Uh, so I had to buy my cosplay elsewhere. Yeah, I was texting with Desi and I said, how many times are you gonna change your costume 
uh, <laughs> while you're on board. And she said a lot. So, Several. you know, yeah. do we think the merch, the Halcyon merch is going to go to the outlets? I'm going to keep my eyes peeled for the outlet up here in Jersey. But... <laughs> so you don't want anything to do with this thing, but if you want, <laughs> but you're going to, you're going to go ahead and no, take some 50% off merch. Okay. No, I'm just, yeah. the jewelry, they had fine jewelry, didn't they? Fine jewelry, maybe. Um, but yeah, that was an interesting thing is that you could get, um, Sorry, I'm turning down the uh, the super chat uh, for anybody who was uh, scared like Shannon was. Um, the 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 merch stuff um, it could go somewhere else, but it's uh, what I think is so cool about the way they set up the 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 whole experience was you don't buy anything that says Galactic Star Cruiser while you're on the Galactic Star Cruiser. You don't get that until you get off world again, and there's a gift shop there that's specifically for the Star Cruiser stuff. Uh, which I love that, but Desi's getting a magic band and a pin, uh, things that people won't oh, have access to later. Band ordered. Wow. Okay. <laughs> anyway, um, one last thing I want to talk about uh, from the Star Cruiser before we move on is that it was said that Bob Iger, perhaps you've heard of him, uh, CEO of the Disney Company, um, I, it was a little, it was a big deal when he came back. Uh, rejected the Mandalorian and other retheme ideas for Star Wars Galactic Star Ooh. Cruiser. We saw um, that. Stop it. We saw that uh, that when they went into um, uh, kind of take a look at it, the Imagineers went in to see like what can we fix, how can we retool this, probably how can we you know make this more affordable. Maybe I hope. Uh, they went in and looked at everything in the Mandalorian storyline that, you know, some of the concern was maybe the storyline is not doing it for people, that the Raylo timeline is not what they want. Desi, sorry, sorry. I didn't, it's not me that's saying this. It's it's them. Uh, yeah, I know. Uh, and then the other thing was interesting, which, Allie, I, I, I know we didn't give you a chance to talk on this, so I'll throw it to you anyway on this part, is that they said that they would give tours of the hotel as part of it, and he turned that down. I'm like... Is that really what you want to do? I guess it was the idea that, hey, this is already set up. You can go and have the experience of going up to the Halcyon, seeing the atrium, eating the food, uh, maybe having a dinner show and come back down and just keep the building there for that, which sounds really sad because those rooms look really nice. So I don't know what your thoughts were in general about the, the Halcyon. Um, I mean, for me personally, I was not going to pay for it. If somebody offered for me to go, I would go. Um, but it just seems like such a waste. Like you have this building, everything's already done. All of the work has been done. If people are no longer paying for, you know, the voyages, why not open it up? You know, like you said, for a dinner show or something, I would pay a couple hundred dollars to go there for a few hours, get to see the show and do all the Star Wars things. I just, I just is crazy to me. They're just like, nope, this failed. We're done. It's well, I don't. Sad. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I think we think that they'll probably do something with it. Either bring back something that's a more affordable option, maybe less entertainment, maybe less, uh, you know, lower on the food or something. But I can't imagine. Obviously, they have to keep it closed for Q4 to get that uh, cash money. But after that, I think that they're probably going to do something with it. I at least would hope it wouldn't go like all Disney Quest and just sit there empty and then get knocked down and then be NBA experience. And you know, I, I don't know, I feel like there's something that they can do with it. But at the same time, if you look at a map, the the land around the Hollywood studios is at a premium. And so the fact that they've used this part of that land to make this, uh, this hotel is something. So I would have said, there's no way in the world they do anything but repurpose this and make it something. And then because they spent so much money, but then they, again, they also demolished those barges like just demolish them after how much money they spent on it. So yeah, I think they're at the point. Go ahead. Those I don't think you could repurpose. Yeah. I mean, I don't think these rooms are very specific though. So I, I, again, I feel like maybe there is something you can do with it at a cheaper level. Um, I would maybe pay for just, that. Yeah, a couple nights at a cheaper level. Yeah. Uh, one And a lot of people talked about being claustrophobic and didn't want to be like enclosed in for two days, which I know you get to go to Batu for a little while. But, you know, you have that experience, I said, on a cruise and whoever we were talking to last week was like, yeah, but with a cruise, you can walk outside, you can breathe in the air, um, that kind of stuff. This is a little bit, uh, you know, at least for that, if you could go in for the day or spend the night there and then come out and go, come and go as you please the same way that you would in a normal Disney hotel, maybe that'll be a thing. But we'll see how it works out. Uh, let's move on to the live action Ariel, Ariel movie. The Little Mermaid actually landed yesterday, no, Friday, uh, and hit Friday. theaters. 
and um, and there is a lot of stuff happening at Disney World and probably Disneyland too. But we all have this information from Disney World. There's a sand sculpture that they made, which quite honestly freaks me out a little bit. <laughs> like usually these I sand saw sculptures. It in Disneyland, it was weird. These sand sculptures are usually amazing, and these artisans are fantastic, and they do things that I could never do. But that one looks like she's broken her back and she's in severe pain. Um, <laughs> so I mean. Again, they're doing they're, they're they're very intricate, and I'm sure maybe when it was said and done that it looked a little bit different. But uh, that was at Disney Springs, and then they also had at AMC, and they do this for all the the big Disney premieres. They had this huge, uh, well, blue carpet with all of the banners that they had out there, and then we had uh, meet and greets uh, of Ariel at Hollywood Studios. Uh, there was a meet and greet of her at Disneyland. There was also another meet and greet at um, uh, and in Paris. And then, of course, you can't have an event without some uh, Instagrammable treats. This looks incredibly hard to eat in the Florida sun. That's all I'm saying when I look at this. It looks like it's going to fall apart. Get your picks quickly. Um, so have you seen this stuff in the parks already? I know that, uh, Allie, you go into the parks uh, in Disneyland. Um, I know that Arlo was there for the first meet and greet, but have you been in yet to see any of this? Um, they had, they were working on the sand sculpture when I was there Thursday. I haven't been back since. I'm going tomorrow. I'm uh, going to spend all day there tomorrow. Um, but yeah, I saw her little setup in Fantasyland where they were going to, she was going to do her meets. Um, and then when I saw what they did at Hollywood Studios, I was actually a little disappointed because it looked like they did a really good job at Hollywood Studios uh, with the theming and the, the pictures and everything they had. And then the Disneyland one, they just kind of threw her up in front of Small World. So, I mean, better than nothing, but... Um, if she's there tomorrow and there's no line, I'm definitely going to check it out because she seems super fun and her dress was yeah. amazing. Yeah, this is the one uh, at Disneyland, and I was surprised that they did such an ornate setup outdoors uh, for this one. Yeah. Uh, whereas the one at Disney World is inside the One Man's Dream back where um, uh, back where they had um, uh, Mike and Sully, I guess. Um, and, you know, the Monsters, Inc. meet and greet in the back there. And at one point they had Star-Lord Steve and Baby Groot. Uh, they had some other, like, interesting, uh, you know, meet and greets back there. So they do have a place for it, which is great. I thought it was interesting that they set it up here. I would have thought they – I don't know where I was expecting them to do it at Disneyland. But this is right over near It's a Small World on, the, on that little promenade, like, right across from yeah. uh, uh, the Storybook Canal Boats, right? Yeah. That's kind of cool. Um, and then, of course, they also have uh, other treats. Uh, I'm, I'm looking at this ice cream cone, which, again, looks, uh, looks very complicated. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so this is the part of your world ice cream cone. And then they also have this drink, which is Bubbles of the Sea, inspired by uh, the Little Mermaid. So I uh, can't wait to see what else they have out there in California. But I love, again, whenever they do uh, crossover stuff, uh, that's always pretty exciting to me that uh, we talked about Guardians of the Galaxy and how much stuff that they did there, the, the synergy between it. The, if you go to see the movie and then you go into the parks and see the thing that you just saw, to me that's kind of cool. Uh, this is a limited engagement, though, so I think it's one of those things if you want to see it, you got to get out there and see it now. Uh, so let's move over to uh, the Pixar Place Hotel. Um, I, I, and again, I'm gonna throw this one to Allie because you are out there in California with this. There are three hotels for those of you who do not know uh, that are Disney owned at Disneyland. There's the Disneyland Hotel, the Grand Californian, and the Paradise Pier, soon to be the Pixar Place Hotel. And the Paradise Pier is one that they bought, so it has never felt like a Disney hotel. There, there's, there's always been weirdness about it to me uh, when you go in there, but now uh, they're, they're doing this whole Pixar overlay, and we get to see that there's some things that they've already started doing. But I'm a little disappointed, Allie, like in these, these lights out here because the original artwork. Uh, let's see if I can find it. Show the, the, the Luxo ball out here, and here we've got like these little weird dots. What, what are you doing? Are you not overseeing this project out there? Please fix it. <laughs> I'm not. They sent me there Thursday to take those photos. Um, yeah, I thought it was supposed to be the Pixar ball, and then I was looking, and I'm like, there's just these random colors. Like, it looks okay. Um, and then Arlo was there this morning. Um, the lobby is now open, so all of that is done. So I actually might meander over there tomorrow. Um, it looks okay. Um, but just looking at his pictures, it just seemed like 
like any lobby that you would find in Vegas. Like it didn't seem like there was any whimsy to it. And that's always been an issue with that hotel. Like you said, it was never um, built by Disney. So it always felt like Disney just kind of slapped some stickers on it because it was close and was like, here, come stay at this cheaper hotel where you have to walk a mile to get into the parks. But well, it's, and it's, it's, okay. it's kind of been a shadow of itself, too, because they closed down yeah. the PCH Grill um, restaurant. And, you know, then once they started construction, everything else was shut down. And but guess what? They didn't lower the price. It was still the same huge, like five hundred dollar a night price point. So that was definitely a problem. But here's uh, here's a couple other pictures of the concept art that we were able to see. So there's the lobby of the concept art. Here's what the lobby would look like with that glass elevator. They didn't take that out. Uh, and then here's the pool that is like, uh, you know, on the back of the hotel and then this little play area that they've got here. But um, Shannon, you were just out there in California and did you take a look at all this stuff? You're nodding your head. Do you love it? Do you hate it? Did you go look at it? <laughs> Terrible. Yeah, we did. But at the time, the lobby wasn't open yet. It was it was chaotic because the front entrance was closed and we went around the back. Guests didn't seem happy, but I was shocked at the prices, which you're right, it was around $500 a night. There's all this construction going on. But besides that, the building itself, I think, looks terrible. And normally I like black and white color scheme, uh, but it, the colors are really odd in those circles. And if they were, if they were the, Lux, uh, was it the Luxo balls, Pixar balls, yeah. it would, I think it would look cute. There's something about it that does not work and it, it does not give the Disney feels at all. Which of the following does not belong? You should have just imploded it, built new. And can we also talk about the chain restaurant they're putting in there? Like, let's make it as anti-Disney as we can be. Well, this whole Maple restaurant, I was going, what Pixar does that tie into? I'm like racking my brain going, was that, yeah. was that something that I missed in like the good dinosaur? There was some Maple reference in there. And yeah, I, I didn't get maybe, that either. Maybe, uh, turning red because she's in toronto that's exactly what it is all right yeah <laughs> here we go we fixed it <laughs> um ali do you think that the like is that a big chain i mean like that maple is that a big deal restaurant in southern california i've never even heard of it until i saw it on our article i have no idea what okay. that is well but it's a good thing that you read our our blog <laughs> uh when is portos coming that's really all i care about is when is not i don't know but it needs to come super soon there's literally one though like super close to disneyland so if you're craving it like it's a quick uber ride like a really big one but portos uh, is gonna that's gonna be a traffic jam yeah i mean free. it's it, it's gonna be just like gideon so for those of you that don't know about portos it's a a, a pastry shop bakery in california mm -hmm. that's coming to disney uh downtown disney and uh josh tomorrow at the d23 uh, panel for parks gave everybody in the audience a, a little pack of like samples to which I was there with my wife and uh, we both got them and I'm at the dork taking pictures of each of them so that I can look and I look over and they're gone. She's eating them all. And she's like, oh, okay, let me tell you which ones you need to eat first. This is the one you eat first and then end with that one. And, you know, so she was an instant fan. And when they mentioned it in that hall, people went bananas. So um, it's, it's definitely good. a big deal. But it, it reminds me of Gideon's. Like you can go to the, uh, the other Gideon's in Florida and it's not such a bad line, but you have to have like a blood sample and uh, proof of like royalty to be able to get into the one at Disney Springs still. So, I mean, it's, it's kind of funny. Anyway, let, let's move on to missing stuff, as I've called it here, because one of the things that's missing, and we don't necessarily think it was stolen unless, uh, Desi, you've taken it. I don't know. But the Rock and Roller Coaster reopened, and it was missing this ancient relic of a signed uh, photo from the band that's uh, from out in front of the... Um, from out in front of the guitar. So we, you know, this thing is, has, is just recently reopened and we don't see this picture out there, which is a little bit weird. It's not like they didn't, you know, they left everything else behind. Uh, but I'm going to, I'm going to pitch to both of these and I'm going to let y'all talk about it. The other thing is that this one makes me sad because this is the why I always say you need to get in early on something before they change things is that they had this, I thought a funny bit at uh, Roundup Rodeo Barbecue <laughs> where they would bring you this oversized <laughs> pencil for you to uh, sign your check at the end of the night. And, uh, and apparently they have gotten rid of them because people were stealing them. So uh, that kind of stinks. Um, I, 
I, I mean, again, this is why we can't have nice things. So, Desi, uh, g give me all the, all the thoughts you have. What is wrong with people? I mean, <laughs> honestly, I think that you could probably buy this giant pencil on Amazon or something. But it was so cute when we got this and, you know, at the end of the meal, it was just kind of like, oh, my goodness, like ex extra magic that we weren't expecting that. It was just adorable. And even though my husband technically signed the check, I was like, give me the pencil. I want to take a picture with it. I took a picture with the pencil just because it was so cute. Um, how is anybody smuggling this away? This pencil is gigantic. I don't think it could fit in my backpack. So I don't know what bags people are bringing in to shove this in or if they're putting it in like their coat. I don't know. I feel like it would be very hard to smuggle out. Unlike the spork, which is like, you know, somebody could hide that in their pocket so I could understand why that went away why are these pencils going away who is smuggling these out what is wrong with people almost exactly as you said how are they getting them out of the park Caitlin Stewart in chat said how are they getting them out of the restaurant like you know <laughs> yeah. like immediately yeah. like it, they do seem too big for backpacks and I'm sure that probably when the Imagineers or whoever oh. was creating these was sitting around was probably like let's make sure that they are big enough that people can't take them would people really take them <laughs> yes Steve people would really take them you better make sure that we don't do this <laughs> um, and and also uh, star viewers said I wonder if the poster from uh, Aerosmith will mysteriously show up on eBay I think these pencils might um, and you know what you were talking about with the sporks and the sporks there had to have been thousands because it was the utensil to use while you're in, in here I'm sure there were probably like 10 of these things that they had to wait because if you know if it's anything like a regular pin in a restaurant I can't even tell you how many I've been to where everybody is paying their own way we get four checks but the waiter only has one pin so if they can't do it on a regular basis with like regular pins, these must be a, a real challenge to have. So uh, Shannon, um, thoughts on how people are the worst? <laughs> uh, what else is there to say about it? People are the worst and uh, we, we, we can't have nice things and it's really sad. And these are the little touches that make us happy and it, it's kind of that extra Disney magic. So. I, I don't know. I hope that Imagineers don't lose steam or not want to do this anymore, but I don't know. Yeah, no, I get it. Um, speaking of, of, of we can't have nice things, there was a guest that got their leg trapped uh, on the um, – uh, the Navi River journey. And it was one of those things where I'm like, I, as soon as I read this story, I'm like wrapping my brain, racking my brain to going, how, how did they, because the boat, what like i was trying to figure it out and i think that you know in my mind the way this worked out uh was that when they had like it was probably a kid i think it was a kid that had their foot out of the boat coming into um the like the station and probably that's where it kind of narrows down to where the boat is right flush with the uh with the dock and and i'm shocked that they you know that something horrible didn't happen that they lost the appendage at that point i'm glad everybody was okay and according to our article it was there was only there wasn't any major damage to same but um i mean this is a, a main concern and apparently the cast members were on it immediately which you know very thankful for that and as a cast member who used to run an attraction they go through these drills ad nauseum there was that big red mushroom button that you hit to shut it all down and if you've ever been in the Haunted Mansion or on the Skyliner and it shuts down for a second, that's that's a cast member probably being you know, extra careful about somebody who's kind of doing the wrong thing. Jumping out of the Skyliner then trying to jump back in or you know drop something out of the doom buggy and is stepping out to get it. So um, Allie, uh, you've probably heard a lot of horror stories like this one. It's, it just goes back to what we just said. People are the worst. Like I'm sure it was an innocent mistake for the kid, but I mean, the amount of times that I see kids who, you know, there's a reason they tell you to keep everything inside the vehicle. Like it's a safety issue. And I just see kids all the time, especially at Splash Mountain, kids are grabbing the water and the parents just are laughing about it and, and encouraging it. And there's a reason for it. And then they get mad at Disney when it's their fault that, you know, they're not listening or paying attention. So, you know, it's great that nothing else happened out of this but there's probably going to be more safety things that are added. And it's just, uh, people are the worst. <laughs> it's just, it's terrible. Uh, like, just Desi, keep everything inside. 
Yeah, exactly. Please keep your, like, how many times have we heard, please keep your hands and arms inside the boat at all times? Did they just think that was a minor <laughs> suggestion? I mean, the, there's a reason. <laughs> when, when my daughter was little and she and her grandmother used to do the thing where you see the two, the two characters on the boat and one of them's doing like this. And they would just like jokingly do this in the boat because of like the way it was set up. Um, but yeah, it, it's something that there's signage everywhere. Uh, somebody actually in the chat was saying like, was there not an adult keeping an eye on them? Um, as, uh, as someone who has to constantly herd cats, Desi, do you have any other thoughts on this? So when I heard that somebody got their foot stuck, I thought, oh, maybe it was when they were getting out and you know, their foot slipped and got caught in between. No. They literally had their foot out as they were coming in. That makes no sense to me. I mean, that doesn't even seem like it would be comfortable. Like, why would your foot be all the way up there? If you're a little kid, it seems like it would take some gymnastics to get your foot stuck like that. Um, I would, I think, don't they also say that you're supposed to keep your kids towards the inside of the boat? They say a lot yeah. of things, Tessie. Mm -hmm. They say a lot of things. <laughs> Yes. They also say that, you know, yeah, they say a lot of things. So I, yeah, absolutely agree. I mean, I, I look at this and say, well, that, you know, Disney does everything they possibly can to keep this from happening and keep us safe in the parks. I believe that wholeheartedly. Um, but you, there's only so much they can do. It's just like, you know, uh, sending your kids off to school thinking that, you know, that you, you shouldn't be responsible once they head off to school. This is one of those things where you're in the park with them. It is a very safe place. You need to keep an eye on them. Um, there was just probably somebody was not paying attention and, um, you know, I, things happen, I guess, with kids. You really, uh, you really never know. Let's move on to, uh, this cast perk, which I think is, um, my, my first thought is why was this not a thing ex like a hundred years ago? Why was this not a thing that was out there? I mean, not a hundred years ago because they're cell phones, but they have now, uh, perks for the cast members where they can have exclusive magic mobile pass styles and then also park entry musical extra. So, you know, when they tap into the park, they're going to have a little bit, I, I wonder what the little thing will be like, what the music is. It just says a musical, uh, thing that will come in. Like I can't hardly hear mine. Cause I have, I get a DVC that goes, welcome home. And like, I, I, I hardly ever hear it. Um, and it's a Didn't different it color. Say it's going to be the Mickey Mouse Club music. Oh, is it? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, this says greeted with a Disney song when they enter the theme parks. Uh, is all I'm reading under Park Musical Extra. So, yeah. I mean, I, that makes sense that that would be, you know, their Mouseketeers, something along those lines. That would be kind of a neat thing. Um, but in general, I, I look at this and go, this is kind of almost literally the least they could do. And I kind of love that they are doing it finally uh, for them. So, Shannon, I think you uh, had a thought or a comment about this as well. It, yeah, I, I think all wins are, are wins, right? Um, it's a little thing that they're doing. I did see some rumblings, though, on social media that some people were not a fan of the little extra chime at the beginning. And I don't know if it's because you know, this is the place that you work, but you're trying to separate work and play and you don't want people knowing that you're a cast member. Um, but I think it's cute. However, do I think they should be doing more for cast members? Absolutely. That's just me. No, that, that makes sense. And uh, speaking of doing more for people, let's move on to the next one, which is uh, VI pass holders. Because <laughs> there's another way you could say that. Um, I, I I love that they're doing more for uh, for pass holders in Florida. Apparently, there is an entire month dedicated to pass holders. It just so happens to be a month when I'm not going to be there at all. So that's kind of disappointing. So, Desi, you're going to have to go and enjoy it for all of us. But they've got uh, specialty snacks uh, at the land, a, uh, a, a pass holder lounge at the land, which I don't know exactly that's where cool. that's going to be. Do we know where that's going to be? Because it it mentions the 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 the, um, the snacks and where they're going to be, but it doesn't specifically mention where the lounge is going to be. Um, for some reason, I thought that the lounge was going to be near Sunshine Seasons, but I thought maybe that's just because that's what the picture was on the blog, um, and it related to the snacks. Um, but I'm really excited. I'm excited for pass holders to get something. I mean. DVC has their lounge. Um, I think was it Florida Blue had a lounge within Akershus. Um, mm -hmm. So it's nice that pass holders who pay all this money to come um, and 
spend so much throughout the year have something other than you get entry, congratulations, and a magnet. Um, I <laughs> honestly don't really like the figment magnet. I, you know that I hate the new Mickey shorts that, yeah, yeah. no, that is, sorry, not cute. Give me regular figment. <laughs> don't give me this horrible Mickey shorts version of figment. Um, <laughs> when we did our review of the Mickey shorts on Deep in the Plus, it was like, I think that that is one of the only two times I said I don't recommend whatever it is that we were watching. Um, I hate that style. I'm sorry. But I am looking forward to the I snacks and the lounge. Um, I, there's one like grape flavored drink that I think sounds like it's going to be good. So, so yeah, um, this is the one they did that. last time that I didn't get to get this. this that one's magnet. cute. Yeah, that's because that's Figment. Uh, I, I joked about Star Lord. This is Figment Steve. This is not Figment. <laughs> like, this is. Hashtag that, not my Figment. Hashtag not my Figment, exactly. I mean, I get what they're trying to do there, but yeah, I mean, if it's just because it's a purple dragon doesn't mean it's Figment. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Let us know in the comments what you guys think or in the chat. Because, uh, I, again, I, I agree with you. That's not quite Figment. Well, do I still want it? Yes. Give me my magnet. Um, <laughs> But uh, but Shannon, there's also going to be some discounts. Are you going to you know go ahead and fly down to Florida and, uh, and take advantage of the extra ten percent off? I thought about it, but uh, not this time around because I'll be going uh, later in the summer twice. So I couldn't squeeze in June. Yeah. I'm disappointed to that it's such a short time, but um, yeah. They give you I May thirtieth. Normally I would June, though. Full June advantage. 30th. Will you? Have you already made your oh. list of all the stuff you're going to buy with your extra 10% I'm, off? I'm thinking of all the things that I need to go to Galaxy's Edge and purchase ahead of my Star Cruiser voyage. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, no, good for you then. I think that that's, that's good. I, I love when they do this. They take it to like 30%, and it does seem like a very fair window to do it for, for 30 days. But also at the same time, it's like I'm – not planning on being there at that time so can you mail me my magnet and also my discount yeah, or i don't know it. here's a thought give it to me on shop disney i mean yeah like that's, they, that's they something have done that on occasion yeah they have and usually the only way i find out about it is on our blog wdwnt.com i don't i, I don't get like it doesn't pop up big on on shop disney and say hey by the way you can get a discount here i hope they do that when my window opens to get my star cruiser merch and then i'll have the extra discount in the merch say star cruiser say star cruiser one more time desi star <laughs> cruiser. <laughs> <laughs> no it's fine it's all fine um i'm gonna move on from this one sorry ali on that one i'm just trying to make up some time but the refreshments are here now when what was cool wash and i feel like i went to everybody ahead of time and said hey do you want to talk about this and most people were like nope um, but I do think, I mean, I do think it's, it's, uh, it's relevant kind of that they have this, uh, this new area that they've, they've, uh, they've cooked up over by, uh, by test track where they've got just frozen drinks. I mean, it's not, it's not the be all end all, but I think anything, anytime they have like an unused structure is a problem. So this was cool wash. It started out, it used to have like a car and it was like a little, like a misting area. And then they made it like a place where you could come and get like a, uh, a frozen drink and then now they have this um these little stands that look like they're straight out of the uh uh food and wine festival that they've put over next to the thing so that they can uh you know you can get a drink and then the drink is this banana slushy and and i'm looking at this apparently it has caramel syrup and 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 bl blueberries on top of it um no ali ali do we want this drink in in our lives <laughs> That sounds horrible. <laughs> Banana caramel and blueberries? What? No, I don't want that in my life. I don't need that in my life. <laughs> no? No. Pass. Okay. No, it looks horrible. Um, I'm yeah, here for the frozen coat, but no, that looks bad. Yeah, and it's and it's extra. I mean, you have to pay extra to get this drink, so it's not like uh, it's the same price as everything else because they they give it that extra uh, topping on it. But that it's like six twenty five for that. It's like that's an expensive Slurpee. That's my take on that one. Uh, but again, I like the the look of the new place that they've got this little uh, section. Obviously, they've themed it to you know the new Epcot with the logos and 
made it look new and nice and it doesn't look like just a dilapidated stand where they've shoved a couple tables for the festival in it um shannon um thoughts on this beverage and why we don't need it in our lives <laughs> uh you know i have no comment on that we just don't need it and you can okay. get the frozen coke over in the outpost so Fair enough. Let's move on then. The table or booth? Uh, the reason I put this in here is that now the app will let you choose your seat preference. Uh, and when I said this to everybody, I said, do you want to talk about this? And everyone went, yup, I do want to talk about this. So uh, I, I, since I put you on the spot before, Shannon, about the, the beverage, what do you think about this uh, option? I think it's great for both the guest or the customer because I like having a preference on things and i would also like to see this in the version of indoor outdoor seating where available um i think it's also great for the employees who work at the restaurant because you don't have pain in the butt customers saying like oh yeah i really wanted a booth like having the preference ahead of time and also being able to say i just want whatever comes first i think is is benefits all of us yeah uh desi thoughts um I want to be able to get more specific. I want to say when I eat at Spicy Road Table, I want a table next to the water. I don't want you to shove me in the back corner. Um, yeah. I want like a specific table. I wish that it would get more specific and not just table or booth. Um, give, give me the option to say, you know, if I'm at California Grill, I want to sit next to the window, which I'm sure everybody is going to pick if that's there, but maybe just have a special request and then you type in that you want to sit next to the window or sit next to the lagoon. You're on mute. You're on mute. Oh. Um, that, that, choice, <laughs> that choice does oh. favor uh, the person that knows what they're doing usually, right? I, I would argue though you wouldn't want to put that on because then everybody can see that on the app and know, oh, that's the one I want. Whereas, you know, you as the Disney expert are going, I know the table that I want. And maybe you do know that like it's going to be a booth. So you're playing your odds and you're like, well, the ones that are closer to the water are going to be a booth. So I'm going to to choose the booth. But uh, Allie, have you looked at this, hoped it's coming to Disneyland and figured out how you're going to play it to your advantage? <laughs> No, I think it's great because everybody wins, like people that need a table or booth for whatever reason, you can, you know, put that in ahead of time. It's less work for the cast members. But I also know for like Disneyland at a place like Blue Bayou, where you do want to sit next to the water, like if you just go ask the cast member, usually they will accommodate you. You might have to wait a little longer, but um, usually, at least out here, if you ask, you know, the hostess really nicely, they'll usually put you where you want just if you're willing to wait so I see both sides to that where if you put that in the app then everybody's going to want it and then everybody's going to be waiting so pros and cons yeah uh coach was saying in chat about the fact that uh the sci-fi dine-in like if you don't get to sit in a car why are you even in there like those tables that they have uh you yeah. know that There's that's tables? like yeah there are yeah. tables where you have to sit and look at oh. each other rather than the screen who wants oh. that I mean, I've been looking at these people all day. I don't want to do that. Um, so, yeah, that's that's one of those things where you're like, well, you've just ruined my experience. I had to, you know, fight and scream and claw to get into the sci-fi. And you have this table in here that I certainly don't want. Now, it's usually because there are more people. I think it's like a group of six or more usually that gets the table rather than the car. But the car is like, like that's the way you need to be. So, um Anyway, one last thing I want to talk about before we move on is um, there was uh, there's there's a problem in Mars where it Mars is getting dirty. Uh, like you look at the top of that glow of the uh, the mission to Mars or the um, mission space, and you see that this this top is starting to get nasty. And so uh, it looks like they finally decided they're going to start to clean that up. But I think this goes back to the whole maintenance thing. And usually I I'm. You know, I'm like all about the fact that Disney is all about some maintenance and putting things up. And we're going to talk about where Josh is spending his money in a little bit. Maybe it should be on maintenance. I don't know. This is the kind of thing I would expect in, in Seuss Landing, not at Epcot right next to one of the biggest attractions that we just named the best roller coaster in all of Disney World. So, um, Shannon, thoughts? Yeah, I think this is a perfect uh, segue into just demolishing the whole attraction because no one cares <laughs> the garbage. 
<laughs> wow. Okay. All right. Terrible. All right. Well, and this is this is like if you think this is good, you should have seen Horizons, right? Horizons was on the space. It sits on the bones of Horizons. Uh, it's yeah. one that you know. It's a fuselage thing. Apparently, you know, the uh, vomit comet is a big uh, theme of this area. Because between this and <laughs> Guardians, uh, there's a lot of spinning and, uh, you know, I don't know. Uh, what do you think about all this, Allie? Do you think that uh, this would ever happen to Disneyland? Um, not to the extent that it seems to happen in Florida. I just don't understand why they can't take care of this stuff. Like, it's a cool facade. The building's cool. I agree the ride probably has outlived itself and could be replaced with something better. But... Just keep it clean. Like you're redoing all of Epcot. Why not just clean everything up in the front? And the thing that always bothers me in Florida is your small world. When you're going down that ramp, everything is so dusty. Like everybody's walking yeah. past that. Please dust back there. That's all I'm asking. It's gross. <laughs> well, I mean, at Disneyland, to... it's it's an all all outdoor queue. So I mean, obviously, there's going to be no, problems yours when is it's inside. an indoor queue. I said at Disneyland, it's an outdoor queue, so you don't have to worry about that. You just need to make sure the topiaries are cut and you're fine. So, you know, yeah, they have a lot here. of extra things to worry about. Anyway, no, I, I don't disagree with you, though. That is one of those things where they it feels like they bring that thing down for maintenance so much, you would think they would clean that up. Or maybe it's just time to, you know, remove the, the, the those things stick out from the wall and just, like, attach them straight to the wall so there's no dust. Uh, but with this okay. one, you know, it definitely is. Uh, it, it ain't pretty. So um, and oh. it does need help. So let's uh, let's go ahead and, and save our 47 seconds and move on. And uh, we're going to take another quick commercial break, come right back. And we're going to figure out how we're going to spend Josh's money. Um, so please don't go away. Uh, Park Center will be right back. <laughs> This is Disney Entertainment News Today. I'm Rob Whiteside, and here now are the top Disney Entertainment stories. For the latest in Disney Entertainment News, watch Disney Entertainment News Today, hosted by Rob Whiteside. From movies and series news to stage shows, books, video games, and more, new episodes drop every Tuesday on WWNT.TV. It's time to adjust that set and turn that dial to WDWNT-TV, our new channel where some of your favorite programming from the WDW News Today YouTube channel is heading. If you want to continue to see Boxed In on Fridays, Park Center on Sundays, and as well our Thursday night comedy variety show, WDW News Tonight, you'll have to catch them at their new home, WDWNT-TV. It's easy to subscribe. Just put in the URL, WDWNT.TV, Hit subscribe and make sure you get those notifications. Again, is the only way you'll be able to continue to see these great shows as they are moving away from the WDW News Today channel permanently. We hope to see you over there at our new home, WDWNT-TV. We now return you to your regularly scheduled program. And welcome back to Park Center. Thank you guys again so much for being with us tonight. We really appreciate you. Uh, if you've not already, please give us a thumbs up as it helps people to find us. One th final discussion we wanted to have tonight as it was announced this week, uh, or last week, I guess, that uh, or maybe even further back, I'm starting to lose track, uh, that they're going to put $17 billion in investment into Walt Disney World, which is awesome. Thank you. Like, we need that. Uh, but the problem is there's not a lot on the horizon that we already know about. Uh, there's a few things that haven't happened yet. We don't have, you know, the completion of Epcot. So we don't have Moana's not open yet and the uh, the new um, Communicor Hall and things like that that we know are coming. The Hatbox Ghost is coming, we think, probably sometime around Halloween. So there are little things that are coming that I hope don't get included in this $17 billion. But one of the things that I wanted to figure out here is if you guys could could spend Josh's money, 
Uh, what do you think Disney World needs? And this is a question I asked on Twitter, and a couple of people uh, commented about it and came up with some really good ideas. But just keep this in mind. So Pandora, the world of Avatar, cost the company a half a billion dollars for a land. So that's half a billion dollars right there that they could do. Uh, an attraction like Expedition Everest at the time, and it's, it's a little bit older, costs $100 million. So I feel like there's some money to play with here. Uh, you know, as, as far as that goes. So um, let me let me start with um, with Shannon and ask you, like, if you could spend the 17 billion dollars, uh, you know, does it need to be and it could be anything. It could be rest, more restaurants, hotels, maintenance, uh, transportation. Where, like, where do you think that they need to spend this money? Because I feel like the easy grab is attractions, mm -hmm. but maybe there's something else that you're thinking. Uh, first, to start small. I want a, another moderate resort. We only have three, and I feel like we have the values covered, we have deluxe resorts covered, and I want that classic overly themed moderate resort. Okay, that's a small um, part of the budget. The big thing for me that I, I've been wanting dying for years is a fifth gate, and I know that's probably an unpopular opinion. I don't want a Marvel fifth gate or star wars fifth gate i feel like those have been put into existing parks and they relatively work especially star wars land to me you can't do a whole new park based on that so to answer the question of what do i want this park to be with that budget i want to bring classic disney movies to life much in the way that Cars Land in Disneyland uh, brings that movie to life. When you go, if you've never been to Cars Land before, I don't know what it is about it, but I, when I walk down that street, I feel like I am in that movie and it's a cartoon. So it, it's a very um, interesting feeling. So doing different sections of the park like that, I want to go into Casa Madrigal why we need to do that so i want to see bring me into the movies and i want to see over the top technology and the beauty that is imagineering okay that's fair i i, I and looking again um you know just a quick google search it says that cars land was 1.1 billion Cars Land is by far my favorite land, and I consider myself mm -hmm. a huge Star Wars fan, and Cars Land is my favorite land. I think Radio Springs Racers is probably top five, if not number one, as far as attractions go for me. And so the same thing to be said about that land. You're right. There is something about it. I'm not a huge Cars stand, and yet I go in there yeah. and I'm like... I need yeah. everything. I need the I need the hat that looks like a cone, and I need the you know uh, I need to go to Cozy Cone and get something at, from each stand, and I need like all of it is so well done, and such care was taken to make that. And then the fact after that, and Shannon, I know you just went, but the fact that they go back in and they do uh, the Halloween overlay, the Halloween, and yeah. the, they do the Christmas overlay and make it a completely different place is is outstanding. So. Um, for again, for those of you who are still watching live, thank you guys for watching live. We've set up another chat, and this is this is what I wanted to see: is where do you think we should spend Josh's money? So, new attractions, upgrading attractions, transportation, hotels, um, uh, maintenance. Uh, you know, donde esta? Um, entertainment, restaurants, <laughs> technology upgrades, and then I put that in there too, Shannon. A fifth gate. You know, I, I I agree with you. I think that's something that I would have loved to have seen, especially with Universal working on uh, another uh, park down the road. It would have been nice to do something with Star Wars only, yeah. Pixar only, do something with having, I don't know, um, all the 20th Century Fox IP that they spent a gajillion dollars to get, maybe doing something with that. So I uh, agree with you that, uh, that that would be a good possibility to have. But I love Cars Land, and there was a rumor at some point that Cars Land was going to be added instead of, um, instead of them adding Toy Story Land to Hollywood Studios. I remember back when that rumor was a thing. And uh, and then they were like, okay, we're going to do it, but we're not going to do Radiator Springs Racers. And then it was like, oh, but the Luigi Flying Tires, they'd have to dig deep into the ground, and you can't do that in Florida to do that. Um, oh. So there was a lot of little things that happened. Uh, Desi, wh what are your thoughts? Um, the first thing that I wrote down was, I want the monorail to go between all of the parks, not just between yes. Magic Kingdom and Epcot. I would like to be able to take a monorail 
instead of a Skyliner and directly to Hollywood Studios. I don't want to have to get off at Riviera and then switch into another Skyliner and then go. And also, I can't even bring my double stroller. Um, I'm anti-Skyliner just because of the double stroller thing. Get me a monorail between Epcot and Hollywood Studios, between Hollywood Studios and Magic Kingdom, between Magic Kingdom and Animal Kingdom, Animal Kingdom and Epcot. Like, all, all the monorails. Give me more infrastructure for that. Make park hopping easier. It takes me like an hour to take the boat between Epcot and Hollywood Studios because I can't take the Skyliner because I have a double stroller. Um, please, please extend the monorail. I know that it's a lot of money, but if we, we are talking about $17 billion, I am sure that new monorails can fit within that budget. At least, at least one, connect Animal Kingdom in some way to the other parks. Yeah, it's funny watching the chat. Uh, Skyliner to Animal it's, Kingdom. It's yeah. supposed to be the conservation park, right? But you can only get there from the other parks by gas bus. <laughs> Ooh, All right, now, now, now you're just being silly. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, uh, Lisa said yes, monorail to all parks, Desi. And again, y'all keep voting because this is fun to see the uh, the meter going over here on the side. That I knew attractions was going to be the one that, that got people. Uh, but you're right. I mean, first of all, they need to fix the ones that exist, the monorails that exist. That needs to happen. Um, okay. And also, if you're getting off at Riviera, you're doing it wrong. I'm just throwing that out there. I think you probably meant Caribbean <sighs> Beach, but. Um, oh, but I, I do think, though, <laughs> that um, that if they they like I like the Skyliner and again, I don't have a double stroller to shove in there, but I like the Skyliner because I like that they've made it convenient to get into places. I choose Pop Century because it is a cheaper option for me, but also because of the Skyliner, you can get on and it drops you right off at closer than anything else to Hollywood Studios entrance. Uh, same thing with Epcot, uh, you know, it drops you off right there in the middle. That's great to me. I love both of those things because even if you're staying at Boardwalk, it is a haul to walk all the way over to uh, to Epcot. Same thing if you're staying at um, at, at uh, you know you're walking anywhere else. But I agree. Like I love the monorail. We talked about that before. I love the Skyliner too. Somebody else said bring back trams. Yeah, like what the heck? We yeah. still have parks that don't have trams out here. Um, so I, I, I think that you hit something definitely. I think transportation needs to be upgraded because I pick going to pop century or going to the Polynesian because of how I'm afforded transportation, either via, via monorail or Skyliner. And I think that a lot of other people do too. And you need to give some value to those other resorts like animal kingdom. Why is there not a Skyliner from animal kingdom lodge to animal kingdom? I don't know. I mean, yeah. it feels like that should have been a cheap enough thing uh, to put together. Allie, how would you spend this money? Um, so I spent some of my money at Disneyland, but I did write down some Florida stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can't have it. It's ours. You can't have it. You just said, how would you spend the money? You didn't say I had to no, go to ahead. Florida. Um, go ahead. <clears throat> for me, um, like you guys said, transportation would probably be the biggest thing. Like, why is there not like a Skyliner just connecting everything or monorails connecting everything? Um, the buses are horrible. They are annoying. Like when they work, they're fine, but more buses, more transportation. Um, for sure, maintenance. Um, let's just clean everything up and make it nice and up to Walt's standards. And then also, I think a fifth gate would be great or just expand the Magic Kingdom. Like they were talking about adding, what was that, a villain's land? I think a villain's land would be phenomenal. Um, or expand Star Wars like there's obviously a market for it you can't build Marvel out there so like for me when I go I don't even go into Galaxy's Edge when I go to Florida because I have it here because it's the exact same so why not build something different I think people would be really into that and then you'd have a reason you know to go there for that um, and then the last thing is Animal Kingdom um, Dino Land is a mess, so hopefully whatever they're building there, hopefully it's fantastic. And there needs to be a nighttime show at Animal Kingdom. Build a world of color there. Build something there. Yeah. 
Well, and again, looking at the chat, and thank you guys for voting because I love getting the feedback. This is my favorite part of this is people in the chat can tell us what they're thinking. And I thought that the new attractions would be on the top of everybody's list, and you kind of alluded to that as well, Allie, to say that Dino Land should be the things that they offered, like Moana and Zootopia, and should they bring the villain's land. And I know that Shannon talked about going into Casita and adding Encanto, and yeah. a lot of people want to see Coco represented in the parks as well. All of those things that Josh stood up on stage and said, what if there's something on the other side of Big Thunder Mountain? And to me, I love that because he's saying expansion. He's not saying replacements. The Fantasyland expansion was replacements. It was just a replacement of things that existed. The Batu expansion was replacements. You took land that was there. You took stuff down. You took away Osborne lights. You took away lights, motors, action. You took away the backlot tour. You took away all these other things, and you put in, you know, Batu. And to your point, it should be, I think, something different on both coasts. And I think that they should, you know, expand that as well. But a lot of people are saying magical, magical express. And I thought about that. I thought about putting that as a category about saying perks. You know, the perks that went away, the free magic bands went away, the Magical Express went away, they cut back on housekeeping, all of those things that I think, you know, would be great, but I don't think that falls under the capital budget. I think we're talking about they've been given a capital expenditure budget of $17 billion. I think, unfortunately, that goes into kind of a cost of doing business day-to-day -day situation. So. I, I would love to see that stuff come back too because you if you want to go from MCO, you have to get your own um, your own transportation and that kind of sucks because you'd like to think and dining plans coming back, you'd like to think you could get to a point where it would be an all-inclusive event to go to Disney World because so many other places are and so many other places take care of you that way. Of all the places that need to be taken care of you, Disney should have been number one, and so the Magical Express doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, Matthew in chat said Brazil and India pavilions in Epcot. That I agree. Why are why there were twenty one expansion pads, and they've used some for other things like uh, the Millennium Pavilion, which is now the World Show Place. That takes up an expansion pad. You took up one to expand uh, Norway. You took up one to expand France. But there are more pads. There are only nine countries or eleven countries there now, so you can actually expand that area out. And why wouldn't you? But maybe the problem is that they don't need that influx. But that should have been part of the expansion of Epcot. And it wasn't. I mean, they, they were like, we're going to fix Future World. And I guess they doubled the size of, of France. So, I mean, that's, that's the kind of thing that I think is a little bit frustrating that they haven't done. But, yes, Magical Express should be in there. But, again, looking at the list, the fifth gate thing. Let's talk about the fifth gate for a second. Because, again, Epic Universe is coming. Epic Universe is going to be a new experience outside of the Harry Potter thing. It's going to be all new stuff. And that's going to be, I think, you know, a feather in Universal's cap. I don't think it's going to kill Disney's business, but I do think that it would be nice if Disney was like, and I thought this for the 50th, make the announcement that says we've, we've been around for 50 years, and guess what? After 50 years, we're adding a fifth gate. That would have been fantastic. Yeah, yeah so... Yeah. I mean, uh, Shannon, what what did you say you thought the fifth gate should be? Uh, I think it should be a combination of, um, oh my gosh, the word is escaping me right now, immersive experiences from the from different popular IPs, basically. I want to be completely immersed in these stories with all the technology that Imagineering can throw at us. Yep. And villains. I want villains incorporated. Well, villains was yeah. one of the, I mean, again, back when there were rumors of a fifth gate, room, villains was one, sports was one, which seems weird to me that there would have hmm. been a sports theme to it. But now that you have all of this 20th Century Fox IP, I still don't understand why they don't do a Christmas event at Hollywood Studios that includes John yeah. McClane or Kevin and, you know, uh, um, Home Alone, stuff like that, or a Halloween thing. But there, there's just unlimited amounts of things that they could do for a fifth gate. Um, you said jokingly, Allie, that you were going to spend some of that money at Disneyland. What were you thinking about Disneyland that, that needs the money? Uh, DCA needs help. So I'm going to raise uh, all of that Hollywoodland area and just expand Marvel. Like, there's no reason they couldn't build, like, a flight of passage type ride there that's just themed to Marvel. I think that technology would be perfect for that. And you could make like a Wakanda area or like a new Asgard. And I 
think it would be fantastic. Like we can do Marvel out here, do Marvel, like do a really good job of it and make it immersive. Yeah. Um, and I'm seeing in the chat again, uh, Joe, uh, the Disney. <laughs> so no fifth gate, just <laughs> Joe La, the Disney gay. No fifth gate yet. Just make the parks they have better, which again is what I put here about like uh, upgrading the attractions. Like we still don't have the upgrade for Spaceship Earth that went away. We don't have that. You know that needs to probably be fixed. I think that you know, please for Shannon's sake, make the Big Thunder Mountain and Space Mountain at Disney World as good please. as the one at Disneyland. She would like yes. for, for that to be a thing that happens. Um, as good but as also, Disneyland Paris. <laughs> But also, Retro Red said Star Wars should have been its own park, not a land. Desi, speak in your language. It should have been its own park. Yeah. Uh, I also had on my list to expand Batu into where the Star Cruiser is now. Um, do something more with that. If it's not going to be a hotel, turn it into more experiences. People can take the little um, you know, box truck. Um, as their transportation to off planet to go on the Halcyon or do whatever else. I really liked the, I, the, the void at Disney Springs was one of the most immersive, best experiences I've had. And I'm so sad that they went out of business because of COVID. Um, COVID is over now. So why can't we have an experience like that back again? Um, I'm sure Imagineers can come up with something similar technology that they had at the void where you could live out your disney star wars experience where rooms used to be aboard the halcyon um take some of that space and if you don't need a parking lot for that either anymore um take that space and expand out uh, with more star wars stuff all the star wars stuff yep can i just tell you though you guys were talking about fixing i think uh, uh ali you talked about fixing disney uh, dino land I still feel like there is so much expansion opportunity in Animal Kingdom. It never, to me, yeah. lived up to its potential because you were supposed to have multiple safaris, not just the one. And then we have a safari and two walking trails. And then the same thing about the Beastly Kingdom. And that did become Pandora eventually, but there still looks like there should be expansion to Pandora. But when I look at this map, and I bring this up every uh, year, whether I need to or not, is if you look at this map, you can see Kali River Rapids is right here. This was supposed to be, I think it was called Tiger River Run, maybe, and it was supposed to use all this space up here. Look at this empty space between there and Conservation Station. Look at all that empty mm. space up in here that they could use. There's nothing else on it. It's not, they're not animal facilities. There's nothing else because this was originally cleared to be part of a bigger uh, raft ride, right? So this kind of area up here, I have screamed and yelled should have been Zootopia. Now that's not what uh, what Josh wants to do, he wants to take half of Dino Land and make it Zootopia and half of it and make it Moana. And I'm okay with that. I love that Dino Land has dinosaur, but if you can make that ride better, because it's not Indiana Jones, right, Allie? Like when you go to Dinosaur, if you've, if you've ridden Indy, you're like, why are there so many dark spaces in here? It's the same track. Why are there, why are there things missing? Um, it, it would be nice to really plus that out and, and make that something bigger. But I think there's an opportunity for expansion here in Animal Kingdom as well. So, I mean, I look at all that and go, you know, we should do something else. But let's look at the poll for a second. And notice no one said hotels. All right, we're done. We don't need any I more hotels. I said moderate. I said I no, want you, to you, moderate. You did. I'm looking at the chat. So nobody in the chat <laughs> said said hotels. They were like, uh, I think as soon as I get my fake Polynesian expansion, I'm done, I guess is how that worked out. Um <laughs> And the same thing with restaurants. Like, I, there are a good amount of restaurants at Disney World. And I look yeah. at Disneyland, and I'm planning a Disneyland trip, Allie, and it's like I almost always go to who wants to go to Blue Bayou and who wants to go to Lamplight. And then, you know, I mean, there's some stuff. Carthay. At, at, go to Carthay. I'm not allowed. Sorry. They won't let me in there. I've got uh, the – no, they won't let me in. But, um, but again, I feel like Disneyland could benefit from some more restaurants, especially if we're talking about Batu. There should be a seated Star Wars meal. There should be. That's what and they should more have in the rooftops. Too. More rooftops? Yeah, more rooftop dining. Okay. Um, who, Allie, can you make that happen? Because the next time Shannon comes, she wants there to be yeah. more uh, rooftop dining. <laughs> I want them on both right. coasts. 
Yeah. <laughs> I I think that we know uh, for the most part what he's planning on doing with this money is the expansions that he teased at D23. No one has balked at. No one, I think, has said. And a lot of times we feel like they put out feelers to say, do people like this? And he was blatant about it, which was very refreshing to say, hey, this is way, way blue sky. But we've actually draw, gone to the trouble to draw up something. Villains, uh, Encanto, Coco, what do you all think? And everybody's like, cool. Let's do it. Let's make let's have some expansion. And the same thing with Dino Land. Like it's time for a refresh. When we were talking about like uh, roller coasters before, obviously Primeval World left. There was supposed to be one a Dragon's Tower at Beastly Kingdom, and there was supposed to be uh, the uh, Excavator roller coaster in Dino Land. So all of these things didn't happen, uh, except Primeval World did. But uh, the other roller coasters that we could have had there didn't happen. And so it would be nice to see some expansion, in my opinion, on Animal Kingdom. But thank you guys for voting in the chat. I I, I love seeing this stuff. So. Uh, we'll do more of that in the future. But uh, before we get off the uh, off here, and I uh, know we ran a little late, I want to go back around and get final thoughts from everybody uh, on this on this particular topic. And we'll start with Desi and work our way around uh, to Shannon. Do you have any final thoughts? I am just excited that they are willing to put investment into the parks. Hopefully, add capacity. Um, I I think that this could be a really exciting time in the future. So. Let's see what happens. Let's see if all of this blue sky comes true. That's that's my hope. Nice. Okay. And Allie? Yeah, like Desi said, the blue sky stuff that they presented at D23 sounded fantastic. Let the Imagineers do what they do best. Let them be creative. Let them do their own things. Let's clean up what we have. Let's improve the things that could be improved upon and let's build a bunch of amazing things and then people will venture back to Disney, the ones that have left for Universal. You know, make it yep. make it amazing like it used to be. Well, before we get it, before we go, I do see we have two super chats. Retro Red said they have done something with all uh, they have done something with all the trilogies that way uh, and had much bigger appeal also update spaceship earth is needed so bad thanks guys so yeah retro thank you for the the super chat we appreciate it uh and then jason champagne uh gave a five dollar super chat and said uh do not remove dinosaur i'm fine with moana replacing the rest of dinorama and zootopia can go into the empty space behind kali river rapids so uh no you know what i get that uh, for sure like that that i i do like dinosaur and desi's flexing a little bit there um, I mean, but I, what I've always no. liked about that is it's a different experience than what you get at um, at at Disneyland, and it's the same ride. Like you know, to your point, um, Ali, that's one of those things that they should do different things. So thank you guys, thank you both for the super chats. We appreciate it. Um, and uh, and then uh, Shannon, let me uh, get your final thoughts before we go on. Yeah. So I am I am cautiously optimistic. I was so disappointed because of the two big things that I wanted in Epcot, pop-ins and that second story festival pavilion were scrapped, I was pretty heartbroken. So I don't wanna get my hopes up here, but this is a lot of money. This is going to be a big deal. Um, so I am looking forward to what the future holds for them. Uh, okay. I uh, love that. So uh, again, thank you guys for uh, for being on tonight. I appreciate it. Thank you guys uh, in chat for helping us and voting along the way here. We appreciate you doing that. Um, I think it makes it a little bit more fun to hear what you guys are thinking too. So thank you for, for being a part of this. And then also we want to give a shout out to our WIGS members. We love our WIGS, the WDWNT Interglobe Society. Thank you guys so much for being members of our WDWNT family. If you want to hear, hear more about that, you can go to patreon.com forward slash WDWNT for more includes post shows, including a quick post show after this show uh, where we'll kind of download, uh, you know, some of the stuff we've talked about tonight and let you guys, uh, you know, talk back with us uh, in chat. So thank you for being here. Um, uh, our plan is to do another uh, another. Um, park center next sunday night you know we're on a roll let's keep going uh but next sunday uh next thursday is going to be the return of uh of news tonight and like i said this wednesday night we're going to be doing spider-man homecoming so if you watch deep in the plus with us we appreciate it 9 p.m on wednesday night do your do your homework do uh watch <laughs> spider-man homecoming now that it's on disney plus and come back and experience that with us we would appreciate it uh and thank you again to this this fine panel i appreciate everything that you guys have done and uh, and shared with us tonight and uh, and all the homework you had to do 
uh, to come on the show tonight. So thanks, and uh, we will talk to you guys later. Have a great week. One more, one more. Nobody. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> <laughs> Love it.